Welcome to Ligari. This video is going to show you how to fill saw cuts or cracks in your concrete prior to your epoxy application to create that seamless floor. You can also pigment our patch or paste with any metallics to create decorative wall finishes or awesome art projects. Our patch or paste is a thick, non-sag, 100% solids epoxy with endless applications and can be purchased at Ligari.com under single items. We're going to show you how to patch cracks um, in preparation for our metallic epoxy floor kit. Now we're going to be filling these cracks with our patcher paste. You don't have to fill the cracks. Um, you can actually leave them and kind of ignore them. A lot of people want to go for more of a seamless look. So you can get that look by filling the cracks with our patcher paste. So the first thing you need to do is actually clean out the cracks. Now even if you're not using the patcher paste, you still need to clean out the cracks. So what we're going to do is take uh, some sort of a scraper like this. I'm going to be use, use this scraper, the sharp edge. And the first thing we're going to do is just scrape on the inside of the crack to remove any loose dirt, debris, you know, when they build these houses, a lot of times it just gets caked with stuff. So we're just gonna loosen all that stuff up. On this floor, we're gonna be going with more of a seamless look, but you can actually do the floor without filling the cracks and then fill the cracks with like a silicone caulk or something that's made for these types of cracks when the floor is all done. So plenty of options. All right, so this crack is pretty much cleared out. Now I'm just gonna vacuum it out. As you can see, that didn't take long. It took me maybe a minute and a half, a couple minutes to do that. So we're going to do all of these cracks and then we're going to show you a couple different ways to apply our patcher paste to these cracks if you want a seamless floor. Okay, so we've cleaned out the cracks. The other thing you wanna be, you, you be aware of is all of the perimeter around the room, the garage, whatever room you're going to be uh, doing, there's always lots of junk on the edge. So you, you know, you're welcome to chip that stuff out if you like and scrape it out like, we've taught, like we showed you just a second ago. Also, especially in garages you run into this and if there's no trim on the room, that you're doing. You'll, a lot of times you'll have this sheetrock that's elevated off the ground and you'll constantly have like sheetrock chunks and, and just issue underneath the sheetrock. Now you can always tape that off. We're not going to, this is relatively clean, but even like over in the corner, this is very common. Just piles of mud. We'll even take and probably chip off this tape right here. I mean, look at all this garbage. So you want to go and scrape that, you want to scrape that stuff and then vacuum that up as well. So we're going to go around the room, just look for any chips, look for anything that might need to be scraped off. You can, you can also grind the top of that because the, the floor will require grinding to properly prep it. If you have a little four inch cup wheel, a little grinder, you can buzz that very quickly just to smooth that off if you'd like. We're not going to, we're happy with the profile of that. And by the time we're done with the process, we think it's going to look great. Now, we're going to do a darker floor in here, but this 
This is going to match the floor. What we're going to do is just apply our primer to the uh, stem walls, and then we're going to apply the top coat. We're not going to be putting epoxy on it, um, just because it'll never match the marbleization of the floor, but we don't want these stem walls to stick out like a sore thumb, so we're gonna prime it the same color as the floor, and we're also going to apply the top coat to it so it has a similar sheen. All right, so we're gonna finish going around and just vacuuming the perimeter and making sure uh, big time that you wanna get right underneath the sheetrock. We can't stress this enough, even if it's clean. Sometimes you even wanna just rub your hand on the sheetrock because look, look at all the dust and just junk that falls off, even if I just barely touch it. It's just falling off onto the floor. So we might just go along and even tape that up before we coat the floor or at least Rub it a little bit before we vacuum just to loosen some of that up so it doesn't fall on our floor. That's a good habit to get into before you do floors like this because inevitably you're probably going to, you know, hit the floor or, you know, just brush it with the side of your foot or with a squeegee and this stuff's all going to be falling into the floor. So we definitely don't want that. So we want to make sure that we get a lot of that sheetrock dust up as well. We're getting ready to put the patch or paste in the cracks and we wanna give you a little, a little tip of what you can do to these cracks. Now you don't have to tape off the cracks, but it can make the grinding go a lot faster if you don't have a very powerful grinder or you're using a small grinder. And this is also uh, the, same, the same process you would actually do to caulk and fill in these if you wanted to fill them with a silicone uh, caulk later on when the floor is completely done. What you're gonna do is take like blue painter's tape and you're just going to tape on each side of this line. And this is very fast. I'm pulling it out probably about three, two or three feet away from my hand so that I can guide the tape. So I'm right above the crack and I'm just looking down at the tape and I wanna guide it. It goes very fast. So what we'll do is we'll tape these off and then we'll probably just blow the cracks out one last time. I'll do the same thing. I'll go back the other way. All right, so you can see that doesn't take long, but it can actually save you a lot of time on the back end when it comes time to grinding the patcher paste. So now when Tyler fills in these, these cracks, you'll actually be able to see kind of two different methods to do it. Now he's gonna fill both of them high, but you'll be able to see what this looks like. The other thing is you wanna, you wanna walk around and take note of where cracks are at. You might even, you know, if you see a crack, if you're walking through the garage and you see a crack somewhere, like right here, here's a crack that's going through the garage. Now this is a very small, small, like fracture crack. It's not very big. I might even put tape next to that just to remind me where the cracks are at because we, wanna, we don't want, only want to fill in, you know, the control joints. These are called control joints. We want to fill in any little fracture crack, any type of crack that we can see that's big enough uh, that you can see it with your eye. So that's what we're going to do now. The other thing we're going to do is notice this big gap between the slab and the foundation. We're actually going to fill that as well. Now, what you can do is you can actually tape up on the wall high so you don't just get tons of patch or paste all over the wall. And you can tape, again, on the ground a little bit away from it. And it's just so we're not making a mess all over the slab. You can even tape higher if you'd like. 
But notice how we've kind of isolated this area. Now what we're going to do when we mix up the patcher paste, we're going to shove it down this crack because we don't want to lose epoxy down that crack. That's just, that's a waste. So we want to fill in any area where we're going to lose epoxy. And this is definitely one of those areas. So we'll probably look for any other larger cracks where the foundation and the slab meet, tape those off, or maybe we won't tape them off, but we'll at least put tape by them so we remember where they're at. And then we'll show you how to fill everything with patcher paste next. Patcher paste is a two to one ratio. Two parts A to one part B. We have these awesome sticks that come with the patcher paste to help you really scrape out the inside of the containers. I'll show you that in a minute. So here's the part B. This is half a gallon. Then uh, part A, of course, is a uh, full one gallon because it is a two to one ratio. So we're gonna mix up the entire batch. Now, the patcher paste is a, is a very thick, resin-based product that's 100% solids. It doesn't shrink. Um, and you'll see Tyler put that down in a minute. But if you're mixing smaller amounts, the easiest thing to do is to just scoop some out with like a stir stick, put it in like a core container, a two core container, and then just kind of take that and just pat it on the table or on the ground and let it level out so you can see where the line is. And then you can add your B to that and bring it up to the next line. It is kind of annoying to work with unless you're mixing up the whole amount. So we're going to be mixing up the whole entire thing. I'm gonna open up my part A. You can already kind of see how messy that can get. And guys, if you, if you acclimate this, it's a little bit colder where we're at right now, but if you acclimate this to about 70 degrees, it'll, it'll, it'll actually be a lot easier to work with than even this. But we're just gonna slowly work it out of this container, get all of it out, scrape the sides. This stick fits right inside this container. So we get the majority of it out, and then you're just gonna scrape the sides. All right, you can just see I'm just getting all of the part A out of the container, scraping the sides. Now take this, just put it back in the box. You can even put the lid back on. That'll just be ready to throw away soon. And we're gonna do the same thing with the part B. I'm gonna use the same stick here. Now this is a two component product, which means as I add the part B, to the container, the clock is essentially ticking. Now you have a lot more time to work with this than like a standard epoxy, but still the pot life is, you know, about 10 to 15 minutes. You might be able to get a little bit more time out of it if it's a little bit colder, but you still wanna work, you know, pretty quick. So get help when you're using it, get it out of the bucket, but you'll see, you'll have plenty of time to work with it. All right, we've got the sides scraped out. And guys, these, these sticks that we've designed, total game changers to really help scrape out the inside. Notice how it just fits right in there. I'm gonna put that stick in here. Now this is just kinda ready to throw away. Change my glove real quick before I grab the drill. We'll mix this up. I'm gonna mix this for about minute and a half. I'm gonna be scraping the sides and the bottom with this stir stick and also with the head of the, of the paddle wheel, the paddle mixer, as I'm mixing it. I'm 
Now guys, I'm using an electric drill. You're going to want to use an electric drill when you're mixing this stuff up. It's gonna be a lot easier to mix up. This isn't something you wanna to try to mix up by hand. All right, so kind of what you're looking for is just, you want everything to have a consistent color. It's very important that you scrape the sides a couple times, a couple times to make sure that there's no single components on the side. You don't want part A or part B by itself because it doesn't get hard unless they're mixed together. So now we have a full kit, a gallon and a half kit, and a five gallon bucket, a, a consistent color. It's like a, it's like a tan color and it's ready to go on the ground. So we need to try to get this out of the bucket within about 10 to 15 minutes and we'll be good to go. We'll have plenty of time to work with it. We'll show you that now. Okay, so now that we got the patch or paste mixed up, like Tim said, we wanna get out of the bucket as fast as we can. If you have someone helping you, that's probably a good idea. What you can have them do is they can just start putting that down on the cracks right in front of you and then you can putty those in there, smooth them off. But since I'm gonna be doing this by myself, I'm just gonna put it into a little sheetrock container. So we'll just get it out. And then we're just gonna start pushing that down into the, the joint here. So these are pretty deep joints. So this is gonna take up quite a bit of this patch or paste and we just want to make sure it gets pushed all the way down in there. So you see I'm hitting it a couple times, really pushing that, working that in there. And I'll get a section done, a couple feet or so, and then I'll come back and make sure we're above the crack because when we grind this, we want this to be perfectly flush. So if I just took it now and scraped it, it's gonna be, it's gonna wind up being a little bit too low. Once you push that all the way down in there, just gonna add a little bit to it. And then we'll just kind of flatten that off. So that's what we're looking for. We wanna have it a little bit above, right, the surface. And this is what Tim was saying. I pull this tape, now I don't have to grind off all this excess, it's only gonna be raised up where the joint's at basically. So this will grind a lot faster versus having to grind this big old patch of epoxy off. So as long as I have a ridge on each side, that tells me this is above the actual surface. So I know that's high. And then what I can do is these little spots that kind of stringed out, I can just scrape those up. That way we don't have to grind them. And then we'll just want to pull this tape before this gets hard. So you could do the whole garage, right? Get your joints done and then come back and pull that blue tape. So now I'll show you the way to do it if you're not using tape. And we can still keep it relatively clean. Because all I can do, I can just really slap this in here quick. Again, just take the time to really push that in there. And then 
I'll scrape up the excess. I can come on the side here. Can get the majority up. All I'm trying to do is just leave it a little bit thicker right now. And then again, lightly flatten it off. So same thing, looking for those ridges, right? We've got bridges on both sides. That tells me when I grind this flush, it's gonna be perfectly flat. So we're just gonna pick up the pace now. I'm not really worried about making a mess next to the joints because I'm gonna come back and scrape it. Now, since we're gonna stop, right, we don't wanna coat out past the garage door because when it's closed, it's gonna look weird. We're gonna have this epoxy patch next to concrete. So I'm just putting a paint stick in here and the seal can tell me where half. So I'm gonna go right in the middle of that seal and that'll be kind of the stopping point. So we can get a relatively straight edge here. And again, just being really light. Making sure I got ridges on both sides. You can see right here, it's a little low. The reason we like to use our patcher paste for stuff like this is because it is resin based and it's formulated to work with our epoxies, our primers. So everything works very well together, bonds to each other extremely well. We don't have any issues with delamination or peeling off from each other. And you can see we've been going for about 11 minutes and it's still easily workable. Nice and fluid, hasn't really got sticky on us. So this section from here to here, took me two minutes to fill it, smooth it off and make sure it's higher. So, I don't know, this is probably 12 feet, 12 foot span here. So we'll just keep going. And again, if you have, typically we like to have a guy going in front of me, filling it. And then my only job would be to flatten it off like we have here to make sure it's high enough. It goes a lot faster, it's a lot easier, but it, it can be done with one person.
So we're gonna fill this, this big gap here with the patcher paste and then all the smaller ones. And we got like a hairline gap. We're just gonna use a paintable latex caulking. All we're trying to do is fill that so the resin doesn't flow in there. So instead of trying to get patcher paste, having to grind it, putting a thin bead of caulk to seal that gap up is gonna keep the resin from flowing in there. And then it's gonna be a lot easier process than doing this patcher paste. So we can do that and then we can pull this right away. Keeps that foundation clean and then minimizes a lot of grinding. So last thing we're gonna do, fill this little hairline crack and it might not take much at all or look like it is, but it's always better to be safe than sorry. So we'll just really work that in there. And again, I don't wanna go past that door threshold where we're gonna be stopping. And I can flatten this off because it's such a hairline crack. We're not worried about leaving this high. And that's it, so that'll grind relatively easy. Now this patcher paste will take about, it'll be tack free in about four to six hours depending on the temperature. Um, and you can typically grind within about 12 hours. So it doesn't take as long as epoxy does to, to set up, it's more of a faster setting resin. Um, and this whole garage took us 25 minutes to fill, push it in there really good, and then to leave it all high. So we'll let this set up, we'll come back tomorrow, and then we'll show you guys grinding, prep work, stuff like that. But again, I wanna pull this tape before I leave, because if that gets hard, the tape's just gonna tear. It's not gonna wanna pull. So we'll pull this now. Just set it in that box that's garbage. And then you can see right where the saw cut was, it's just raised up, that's perfect. That's gonna grind really easy, whether you use a four inch grinder, a seven inch grinder, doesn't really matter.